Hi, this is a short tutorial to showcase some Excel techniques including financial link data types, functions that spill and other functions for summarizing data. It's based on this small case study taking those set of five trades there and calculating a portfolio balance. So let's get started. If you want to follow along, there's a link to this Excel file in the comments. We're going to start with data in this top table here. It's a list of trades that I did last year. For example, I bought Shell, an oil company. I bought 100 shares at 1400 pence, 14 pounds per share, for a value of 1400 on the 29th of March. Notice that I bought have five trades, but two of those trades are for the same company, BP. There's also trades for Tesco, uh, supermarket, and for St. James Place, a uh, financial company. This is our starting point. We've got the raw data here. The first thing I'm going to do is create a table. Press Ctrl T, my table does have headers, and then I've created a table. I will make it into a different sort of format without the banded rows and I'll come over here and I'll call this my simply trade. That's the name of my table. That allows me to do two benefits. First of all, I can come over here and write a structured reference. So I can say the trade value is the quantity multiplied by the price and divided by 100 to get the amount in pounds rather than pence. Notice what we've got up here is we've got a structured reference. We don't have um, C3 start D3 and that makes it more readable. Now we're going to convert these equities into linked data types. Excel now has linked data types. You can see them in the data menu. There's uh, some that in built into Excel like stocks and geography. Uh, characters and products or organizational data types I've created. We'll look at those in a different video. But what I've done is I've selected the five names and I'm going to click on stocks. Excel has now worked out the right stock for Shell and for BP, but it has a bit confusing about Tesco. If we click on the question mark here, it tells us which one do we want. We want the one Tesco on the London Stock Exchange, so I will show that that looks right to me now I'll select it again St. James's Place I know that the ticker is STJ so I'll put that in and see if it comes up that's lovely St. James's Place and that looks the right information so I'll select it so now what we've done is we've converted these into linked data types financial linked data types now let's start building our portfolio balances we're going to have four rows here we have five trades but two of them are for the same equity we are going to use the unique function, which takes a range, this table, the column of the symbol column of the trade table, and it provides a set of unique values. It might be better as well if we take that. Notice that's a spill function. We have to go to the top left one, and we sort it. Another spill function, another function that spills, and so that we get it in alphabetical order. Now let's add a column with the ticker values. The ticker is the unique symbol on the stock exchange for that particular share. I click on equals and then I'm going to click on my link data type. Now I'm going to click the hash. The hash is an operator that refers to the whole of the spilled range, spilled array. And then I can simply say that and we're looking for the ticker. So I will find the ticker symbol and it will spill down like that. Let's use a sum ifs function to calculate the quantity. We start sum ifs, and basically we're going to ask for our sum range, which is going to be the quantity column, create quantity. We're going to ask for our criteria range, which is our column of symbols, and when that matches the symbol in the current row. And since this is a spill range, I can add the hash reference, and that will spill it all the way down. We'll calculate our book value in exactly the same way. We'll use the sum if function, but this time we'll use the trade value. That's the column we're summing up on. And again, the trade symbol is the criteria column, and when that matches the current range. And again, 
hash to spill down. We can get the price from our linked data type. I'll say EB14 and then hash to reference the whole array and then price is what we need. Current value in pounds is simply our current price multiplied by the quantity, the number of shares and divided by 100 to translate from pence to pounds. And of course what I should do is remember to put those hashes in and so it spills down the whole array. There we go. Profit or loss is simply the current value less the book value. Let's do that. I've just paused the recording while I did the next four columns. They're all attributes of the linked data type. The 52 week high, the low, the previous close and the daily price change. What we would like to do though is add some icons to the daily price change. Green arrows for going up, red arrows downwards. Let's come over here and let's choose conditional formatting and icon sets. We'll choose these arrows. We've got the basic icon set there. We're going to conditional format to manage the rules and let's just edit the rule. I've just edited those boundaries there. Let's see how that looks. And there we go. That's what we need. Let's just add in a total row using the sum function, of course, summing the spilled array of the column beneath it. That's the total quantity, 360. And we can just cut and paste and we can see the totals there, £978 profit. The final thing that we would like is a spark line in these cells here, perhaps to show the uh, price of each of these stocks over the last year. To do that, we're going to create a new page where we can put all the kind of details of the stock history prices. And then I'll go to my start video and I'll choose that and I'll put a hash there. That gives us the four, our four shares. I'm going to come along and I'm going to transpose that. So instead of being in a column, it's in a single row. And there we go. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to take this one. We'll do this one on its own first and then we'll do the others. I'll come over here and I'll say equals just C5. And that's just our BP linked data type. I've just done this in a bit. Now I'm going to call the stock history function. And the stock that we want is here. The start date, we're going to use the today function to get today's date and then go back one year, 365 days. The end date can also be today's date. And then we have intervals. We're going to want daily. And then header, we'll, I'll show the header for the moment, one. And then it asks us what we want. And I'll choose zero for date, one for the close price, five for the volume. And let's have a look at that. And what we've got here is we've got a, a, a range, the dates over the last year, the price, and when I expand the column, if we wanted it, the volume traded. I just paused the recording while I did exactly similar formula to each of these four. So if we have a look at one of these, again, it's a stock history from uh, a year ago to today. And this time I'm just bringing back no headers, no dates, no volume, just the close price. Let's insert those spark lines. Now we've got the data. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to choose insert spark line asking me for the data range. I will go to my new sheet and select that range. It's asked me for the location and I'll choose these four cells here and click on OK. And there we have our spark lines. Well, that's it. That was quite a whirlwind tour through uh, lots of different Excel techniques and we are going to be creating videos over the next few weeks and months that look each of these in, the de in detail from the ground up, linked data types, spill functions especially. 
I hope you can join us on those videos. Please do remember to subscribe and then you'll get notified of when those videos come out. Thank you for watching.